So today I'm going to be showing you a cool little piece of tech, and that is this thing, and how this tiny little thing can help you and can help me save a lot of money around the house. This is really kind of the DIYer's best friend, and I'm really glad I picked this thing up. Now, what this thing is, this is an infrared camera made by Infrared, and what it does is it sees heat signatures. So kind of think like that movie, The Predator. Get to the chopper! Kind of like that. Now my house was built in the 70s, and you know what that means. So there's insulation in places, there's insulation not in places. When they were running wires, they bored huge holes through things and allowed drafts into the house. So what this thing is gonna let us do, it's gonna let us go around our house and see where we're letting in hot air and where we're letting out cold air, depending upon the season. Right now it's the summertime, it's well over 100 degrees outside. So we're gonna look around the house and see where we're letting heat in. And then we're gonna go up in the attic, look at our air conditioning system and see where we might have leaks that we can plumb up to save us some money on our cooling bills. Now in the winter time we can do the opposite. We can look for where cold air is coming in or you can go outside and look for the hot air is coming out. So I'm going to show you how this thing works. Let's get over and get it set up. It's really simple. Now this video is already turning into a little bit of a challenge for me in that I have never had to film a video with only one hand before. So we're gonna see how this goes. Now it came in this nice sturdy little carrying case and the camera itself comes with a lens cover. With these cameras, it's really, really important you protect that lens. You'll see here the lens actually doesn't look like your typical camera lens. It almost looks, well, I mean, it's, it's chrome. It's got a, a plating on there. So you really wanna be careful to protect that lens. Now the camera itself is quite small a sturdy little built thing and you will notice here there is a USB type C port on the side of it and we're going to talk about that in just a second but something to note right now is this camera only works with Android phones at the time of filming this now I will have a link below if you're looking for a Apple solution for this but this one right now only works with Android and this is the Android phone that we're going to be using to play around with this camera. Now this is an older Android phone and it does not have a USB type C, which is what this camera has, but that's not an issue because you can get these little adapters. Now, something I'll caution you about is if you are picking up one of these adapters, there are a lot of adapters out there that just transfer power and not data. I had to order four different adapters before I got one that actually transferred data and would work with the camera. So if this is something you need, I do have a link to this one down below so you don't have to go through all the hassle of trying to find one that works. This one works perfectly. Now, setting up the camera on the phone is really, really easy. All you have to do is download the InfraRay app. I'll have a link down below so you make sure you get the right one and plug in the camera. That's really it. So I got the app here. I'm gonna plug the camera in. And now with the camera plugged in, we can start going around the house and checking for those hot spots. Let's get going. But before we start running around the house playing with this thing, I'm gonna show you how this thing works. Now, I'd love to say my workbench normally doesn't look like this, but Anyway, so how I'm gonna do that is I've got a water boiler here. I've got cold water in it. We're gonna point the camera at it, turn it on, and you're gonna be able to see this thing heat up. Now, the basis for how these work is everything that is above 273, sorry, negative 273 degrees centigrade or absolute zero puts off infrared. It's a heat signature that this camera picks up and it translates into a color spectrum. So you'll be able to see the colors change on things as they heat up. What's neat about that is even if it's completely dark out, blacked out dark, you'll still be able to see. So it cuts through the darkness and it also gives the ability to see through walls, which we'll also show you later. But right now, let's get this thing going. So you can see here what's kind of neat is you can see actually the temperature difference between my hand and the cold water in here even. But I have my water boiler and we're going to turn it on and you're going to be able to see the base heat up and then we should be able to see the water change temperature as it goes up to boiling. So let's turn this thing on and watch it slowly heat up. Now check this out, this was pretty neat. I actually noticed this in editing. When I touched the kettle, I actually heated up the top of the kettle a tiny bit with my fingers, which the camera picked up and you can see it fade away after I let go. Now what I'm gonna do for the sake of YouTube is I'm gonna speed it up because it does take a couple minutes for this thing to warm up. So I'm gonna uh, speed it up a little bit quicker so you can watch this thing get hot. And what we should actually see with this because heat rises is 
we should see the top of the water get hot first and then we should see it actually progressively make it down lower until the convection currents start up within there and then it'll start really moving the water around quickly which i believe is what we're seeing right now as the water comes up to a full rolling boil so now let's head into the house and see what we can do with this thing as a diyer so now we're looking at the room that we call the office. This is where I do a lot of my editing. But what's going to be interesting is I did insulation in the attic a while ago on this. So let's see how good I really did. Now, looking into the room here, you can see that window. The heat is just baking in around that window. But the, the thermal curtain thing that I have up there, it actually has cells in it, is doing a really good job of keeping the heat out much better than a uh, than a traditional blind would but then getting up to the top edge there you can actually see like right there and right there where my insulation batting was a little bit short and didn't make it all the way to the edge so maybe that's something I need to think about doing now inside the house isn't the only place that this can come in handy. I'm standing here next to my inverters in the backyard now. These are the inverters for the solar panels that are on the top of the house. I have one inverter for the array over the uh, back of the house and one in the front. And as we all know, electricity and inverters like this generate heat. So if you want to do, be doing electrical inspections, you can use these to check your equipment. And generally speaking, with electrical equipment, if it's getting too hot, you have a problem. So you can find areas with higher resistance, or if you want to check which inverter is running harder, you can. So let's point this thing at these and see what happens. So you can see on these, looking underneath, inside there is where the heat sinks are, and you can see a lot more heat coming off those heat sinks. And coming right up there to the front. So this is the array that's on the front of the house. And this is the array that's on the back of the house. Now, right now the sun's pretty well squared up overhead. So I would expect to see that the two are about the same temperature and it looks like they are, but you would be able to see later on in the day if one was working harder than the other. So now let's go take a look at some other places that this might come in handy when it comes to electrical. We're also gonna do a quick inspection of our panel. Now, any breakers that are in use right now should get brighter. So we're gonna point our camera at our panel and we can go right down the panel here and see which ones are brighter. Now the one right there that's lit up, that's actually our pool. We have another one that's pretty bright and that one actually is the one that runs to our kitchen and we're currently you know, doing some cooking in the kitchen so that one would be bright. So it allows you to inspect the panel and see what circuits are running, what circuits are not, and actually which ones are drawing more than others just by a quick temperature inspection. Now something I think most people wouldn't think about with one of these is actually irrigation. Now I'm up in my front yard and a while ago we converted our entire yard over to desert scape which means we removed a lot of grass and that also means I've got buried lines everywhere and I've been noticing I think I have a little bit of a leak in my line in my sprinkler line but it's hard to find that just by looking at the ground but a leak on a warm day like today will show up as a cold spot that you won't be able to see from here, but you'll be able to see it through here. So I'm gonna fire up the sprinklers for a second, and then we're gonna look at the ground with this thing and see if we can find the cold spot and detect where my leak is. And so we've fired up the sprinklers, we've run it for a little bit. Now we're gonna take this, point it around the yard. I believe it's over in that area. So we're gonna take a look through the camera and sweep the yard. And that little area right there is probably more of a shadow issue we come over here though, you can see I've got a very cold spot on the ground as opposed to the ground around it. Now that cold spot is from the water and the water hitting the surface and then evaporating and making it cold. Now, it's something I wouldn't really be able to detect very well just by looking around the yard, but I can point this right at it. See that cold spot and now I know where I have a leak. Well, hello up here. Now I'm not actually gonna come all the way up in the attic because remember that whole mess? I already can't grab things very well, so if I fall again, it's really not going to be good. My wife is really not going to be happy with me. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking all the duct work up here for the air conditioning to see if we've got any leaks. So I have the air conditioning running right now. It's very hot up in the attic, probably about 140 or so degrees. So we're going to come up here in the attic and we're going to look around with our camera. And we can check our ducting here and we can see right there right there, anywhere it's dark in color is where we're losing the, the cooling through the outside of it. Most of this stuff should be covered in insulation. So those are places where the insulation 
has either come off or was never put on in the first place. Now down there, you can actually also see some of the places where the batting has fallen and you can actually see the, uh, the coolness from inside the house bleeding through into the attic. So those are all places now that I know with this gizmo, I've targeted that I can fix. I'm not gonna be fixing them now because of the busted wing, but we're gonna be doing them soon and making the house a little bit more power efficient. Now your house isn't the only thing you can use these for. There's a couple other cool things you can use them for. So let's head out to the garage. Now I wish I had had this thing when I was restoring my old CB500. That thing had four cylinders, four different carburetors, and getting them all synced up was a complete pain. And being able to take this, look at the headers, and be able to tell which cylinders are running lean because they'd be hotter, and which ones are running rich because they'd be colder, would have been so nice. Instead, I was using one of those little laser things, zapping on each one, and I really couldn't easily monitor the thing. So this would have been a huge help. You could also use it for refrigerant lines and things like that going through the car if you're working on your car's AC, but let's fire up the engine here and see what we can pick up with this thing on the Supra. So I hope you can hear me over the engine. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna watch the engine heat up. I'm gonna watch the header heat up and see how evenly our cylinders are running. We can also come in here and take a look at our radiator and check for hot and cold spots on the radiator, which is pretty awesome too. You can see the top of the radiator right there is getting hot. That's the uh, water pump right there that's showing a lot of heat right there because it's, uh, it's bringing that water through the block. Seeing the heat down in the uh, plug galley and the heat coming off right there, that would be the uh, exhaust manifold. There is a heat shield in the way, so we're not able to see all the uh, individual cylinders, but if that heat shield was out of the way, we'd be able to actually see what cylinders were hotter than others. So hey, I hope this video gave you some ideas of things you could do around your house to save some money, make your house a little bit more comfortable, maybe work on your cars, your motorcycles, or anything else. Let me know if you got one of these cameras, what kind of stuff you would use it for, because this camera is not a one-trick pony. People are using this stuff for search and rescue, for hunting, for all sorts of stuff. If you've got questions about it, or how we're gonna be using it, please leave a comment down below. I'm gonna have a link down in the description if you wanna check this camera out for yourself. And don't forget, if you've got a USB Type-C connection on your phone, this thing will work just fine. If you don't, I have a link for the adapters that will help you out as well. So with that, if you like this video, give it a great big thumbs up down below. And of course, thanks for watching.